Good morning, folks. Saying goodbye here to that little active region we spotted yesterday and the plasma filaments dancing around it. We've got all the top news today starting at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun still dominated by coronal holes as the tiny active region departs bottom right. Northern coronal hole has a very long but sparse extension across equatorial regions here. Few dark patches inside say this might be a massive coronal hole growing. Coronal holes can take two or three rotations of the sun to fully form and can last for several thereafter. By the way, solar rotation is differential, but is around 27 or 28 days. Solar wind here. Long dropout of the intensified coronal hole stream and two things we always look for as these streams end. First, a drop in geomagnetic unrest, which we are seeing over the last 30 hours or so, but also a rise in electrons. Technically, we hit the alert threshold for NOAA yesterday. Really, it should be one line higher if we're talking about particle penetration into the atmosphere for the technology, weather, and health effects. But alas, minor though it is, we do often see the highest electron surges in the wake of coronal holes. By the way, if we do get much above the 10 to the 4th line, it is a major bombardment, but those are rare. Top quakes of the last day struck the South Sandwich Islands and in Papua New Guinea. Neither was tremendously relevant. We also had a solid blood echo at the low velocity zone in the Central American chain just this morning. Australia is up next. Cyclone Damien on the left making landfall, damaging homes with high winds, while on the right we see a strong line of rain heading down over the fire areas to the southeast. That train does continue and will deliver solid rain to that region today. Quick note of interest, we caught a couple readings in the jet stream over 250 miles per hour heading across the pond. It is helping to drive today's expected precipitation over the continent. And folks, while Montana is indeed one of the places seeing a winter, it really just began in some parts of the east. Now granted, to start with a record snowfall in Syracuse is one heck of a thing, but still. More coming to the Midwest tonight and moving into New England quickly by tomorrow. Let's take a moment to get some eye candy here at NGC 5364 from Hubble. Pretty dance of star formation and luminosity amidst the darker dusty filaments. It is considered one of the grand spiral galaxies. Little FYI on space conductivity. They were not able to find any regions around the Earth with cluster that were not populated by superthermal iron. We know it's a sparse part of the solar wind, and it turns out they're looking in that direction, since they've ruled out meteor dust as the main cause of the contribution. Never forget, our star is an element factory, and they have seen nearly every known element in the solar wind. Up next, it's not often we get a cosmologically relevant study down at the single star level, but the question presented is whether these astrophysical objects might launch neutral heating beams into the interstellar medium of galaxies, heating up those tenuous areas. The answer was a resounding yes, and no, we're not going to be able to see that happening very well with modern technology. So what else is hiding, not just around the stars, but in the circumgalactic regions? Folks, that FRB dispersion measure study has hit the Astrophysical Journal, which means the reality of the galactic dusty kaleidoscope through which we view the heavens should now be coming into full focus for cosmologists who also should be realizing that's going to skew everything they are studying at distance too. Of course, it also helps those seeking to debunk the galactic rotation problem, given that there needs to be a ton more plasma out there than is currently believed to be in the models to accomplish that lensing, and if so, we're not going to need dark matter out there too. Excellent paper up next, marching forward on the electrodynamics of this planet. They're seeing these connections between plasma irregularities and ionospheric anomalies that tie together across vast regions of the globe. The global electric circuit and geomagnetic systems, the Walker and Hadley cells, the jets, polar vortex and polar field aligned cap, all part of one solar system circuit housed at the Earth node for now. And the top story, which requires homework if you are new here. The Kimberley rock art is not 17,000 years old as some believe, but it was from right after the last solar micronova and magnetic excursion. These are so similar to what Dr. Peratt shared for our Catastrophe Cycle series. The personified glowing sun worn as a headdress on the figures, the lizards, and even one in the Z-pinch squatter man position. And most importantly, folks, this to me screams Taurus jet model. The north-south jet axis, the plasma torus around it, the glow of the whole system as a halo around that. 
Folks, we did one of the 23 episodes of the series on how the sun may appear to access the scales of justice, the side visible cutout of a translucent plasma form, and there is no doubt it would look like eyes and a nose with the halo boundary of a face probably would have been terrifying. The entire Catastrophe Cycle series is linked for you below. The one episode with Dr. Peratt in these plasma formations is called Plasma Formations. The full movie, the original 23-part series, and all those follow-up episodes we did this year are in this 43-video playlist, Earth Catastrophe Cycle. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.